everyone, and welcome to the Body Wisdom Podcast. Today we have a very special guest, Robert Rickover, who's an Alexander Technique teacher from Lincoln, Nebraska. And today, Robert is going to talk to us about what happens with children who sit for excessive periods of time. And um, a lot of us are spending a lot of time sitting these days at home, and we have school coming up right around the corner, and whether your kids are going to be learning from home or they're going to be going to brick and mortar school, they're going to be spending a lot of time sitting. So Robert is going to be talking to us a little bit about that. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about Robert because he is one of my favorite people in the Alexander Technique world. And he has been an Alexander Technique teacher for close to four decades. He holds an Alexander Technique practice in both Lincoln, Nebraska and Toronto, Canada. And he also teaches students around the world online through his online movement and posture coaching. He holds physics and economics degrees from Yale University and MIT, and he's the creator of the Complete Guide to the Alexander Technique and host of the Alexander Technique podcast. If there's anyone who is qualified to discuss today's topic, it's Robert. Hi, Robert, and welcome to our show. How are you doing today? Hi, Tammy. I'm doing well. The weather's cool here, and it's uh, an, a nice day. So um, I'm doing fine. Wonderful. So we're going to talk about sitting today, right? Yes. yes. Right. And it's, it's an interesting thing that um, I, I think a lot of Alexander teachers would agree that teaching people how to sit well and easily is sometimes um, a, a bit of a challenge because people have developed some pretty strong habits around sitting that are, that are not functional. So I thought today, um, since, since and we're orienting this a bit towards children, but I think that the kind the material that I'd like to talk about today could be easily learned by a parent who could then easily transfer that to their children. And there are a couple of articles that will attach to the the podcast that'll go into more detail on this. So the basic um, thing about sitting is that you are, your body is being supported by the chair to a lesser extent by the floor because often your feet are on the floor. And how you organize your body has a huge impact on whether that sitting is going to be easy or uh, create strain in your body. And there are two, two parts that I think are particularly important to discuss. The first is what's going on with your head relative to your body, your neck and your body. Your head weighs maybe 12 pounds. It's pretty heavy. And it's perched up at the top of your spine. And how you manage that relationship is pretty crucial to everything you do, in, including sitting. And um, I think a very first step in learning how to sit well is learning where your head is in fact resting on the top of your spine. And I'm going to illustrate by bringing my fingers in um, just underneath my earlobes. There's a, if you were to do this on your own at home, there's a little indentation there you'll feel. And I like to come in with my fingers at right angles to that and imagine a line connecting my two fingertips. And that line passes right through the top of my spine. And there's a structure up there that absolutely encourages this kind of movement, nodding movement. And as an experiment, you might, ex you might play around with nodding your head the way you're used to and seeing how, what the range of movement is and how easy that is to do. And then bring your fingers up here, create that imaginary line and say to yourself, I'm going to rotate my head around that line. And you may well find that there's more freedom of movement, greater range of movement, and less, less effort needed to make that movement. 
So that would be one of the first things to find out about yourself, where your head meets the rest of your body, basically. Now, the second part is where your body meets the chair. And uh, I think this might be a good place to, I think you've got an article that a blog that I wrote that has some nice pictures in it. Yes. So maybe this would be a good opportunity to screen share that. Absolutely. Great. So, and if you would scroll up a little bit to the first picture up at the top, there we go. So, uh, yeah, could you bring your cursor over to the sits bones? There's two of them there. And they are extensions downward from your pelvis. They're very, they're quite large and strong. They could support, they're perfectly designed to support your weight. They could support your weight and several people standing on top of you just fine. They're very strong. They're very good at uh, taking uh, the support of the chair and transferring it to your body. On the other hand, off to the right there, you'll see, yes, the sacrum, which is the kind of downward extension of your spine. Uh, it's a, uh, there are several fused vertebrae there. And it is not at all designed to take weight. But I think you could see if that person sitting there were to kind of curve into a slump and rotate uh, their pelvis backwards a bit, that pretty soon that sacrum would be taking some weight. And that is something that is, is going to cause you a lot of problems. Um, back pain, all sorts of things. So. And let's just see the other view. This is more or less a side view, and then we'll explore how do you can find this out on yourself a little for, yeah. This is a back view of the same, again, the two sits bones, you see them resting on the surface, taking the, uh, supporting your weight very nicely, and your sacrum, there's the back view of it, is is definitely not doing any weight bearing in this picture. But again, if someone were to kind of curl back on themselves as they're sitting, it wouldn't take long before the sacrum arrives at the chair and starts, to, and starts taking uh, on some of the weight bearing job, which it is not designed to do. So maybe leaving this picture up for a second, this, this one, yeah. Um, let's see if you can find these sits bones for yourself. The, what I suggest is taking one hand and putting it under your bottom towards the center. So you're, you're resting partially on your hand, which is between the sits bone on one side and your chair. And just see if you can feel that. It'll, be, it'll feel like a little bump or a little extension downward. And if you can feel it, just move around a little and feel how, how that kind of rock, it's like a little rocker. They're little rockers. They're designed to enable you to, just what you're doing right now, Tammy, I can see moving, rocking back and forth. And then maybe take your hand away and see if you can still feel that that connection on that one side and, and perhaps on the other side too of those two projections down uh, between you. They, they are what ideally would arrive at the chair when you're sitting and you can rock forward and backwards around them. You can also lean off to one side and have all of your weight on one sits bone, it can easily take that. You can feel that and then shift in the other direction. Yeah. So 
becoming, I think we could go back to um, the regular screen again. We, we will, uh, you're going to post that yeah. blog so people can see those pictures on their own. Um, learning that relationship between your sits bones and the, and the chair can make a gigantic difference in the comfort of, of your sitting. And I recommend people do that uh, pretty early on in any any Alexander lesson for sure. Learn how learn how your how your body is designed to sit well. But maybe we've had developed some habits of slouching or curving in on ourselves or pulling ourselves out of shape that's caused that nice clean relationship between the sits bones and the chair to be become distorted. Yeah, Robert, that's really, really helpful. I think for a lot of people that um, know the sits bones are there, but they don't really know how to use them or if they should. And I think that sitting, um, as you mentioned in your article, sitting on a flat surface as opposed to a chair that has a cushion um, will allow people to actually feel that sit bone as they're sitting and when I have new students come to me for lessons that's one of the first things that I like to talk to them about is how they they sit in a chair and if they're not able to feel their sit bones then they're probably either slouching or arching and um, just establishing that first relationship with your sit bones and and identifying them I think is really important to learning how to sit in a more um, comfortable and optimal way more and it, it, it leads you to sitting more upright just by the nature of sitting on your sit bones and you can always watch yeah. small children do that um, they're sitting you know on their sit bones like small toddlers if they are sitting um, they're wonderful models to, to look at for absolutely for yeah yeah but it will be very difficult to even find your sit bones if you're sitting on say an overstuffed chair or couch the problem <laughs> And that reflects, it's not just that it's more difficult for you to find them, it's also more difficult for them to play their role properly. Because with a really soft surface, you're sinking into it and your weight is, you know, the upward pressure from the chair is, is now kind of spread out over quite an area, even possibly your legs. And your sits bone really isn't playing a major role anymore in what's going on. And it's all the more likely that you'll end up inadvertently putting uh, undue pressure on your sacrum. Yes. So, but for sure, in order to find these sits bones, a firm surface is going to be really helpful. And once you've found them, then you may find it's easier to at least get a hint of where they are on a softer uh surface as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the exercise of, of putting your hand underneath and, and kind of feeling, I think, is really helpful. And some people might realize that they're bigger than they thought they were when they feel for the sit bones, like in, in real life, not just what you see in the diagram. It's actually in your body, which is really cool. Well, we're really talking about the, the top of your torso and the bottom of your torso. If, if you consider your neck to be part of your torso, then here is the top. Neck is basically the top seven vertebrae. And the very bottom of your torso when you're sitting are your sit bones. And by, by learning where both of those are and a little bit how they function can make a gigantic difference in sitting and in other activities as well. So there are a couple of, uh, if we're okay for time, there are a couple of other things that might be useful to think about with sitting in general. One is, I mentioned a firm surface being being pretty good way to find your sits bones. It's also a pretty good way to sit. It doesn't necessarily have to be a flat wooden surface or a hard wooden surface, but when you get too much cushioning, as I said, everything gets murkier in terms of support, and you're much more likely to um, be sitting in a way that actually creates a little harmful strain in your body, even though, you know, collapsing into a, 
uh, overstuffed chair might feel like you're relaxed. The truth is, it's more that you're collapsed. And uh, you, 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 if you've done it a long time, that you may just you that may just seem like a good way to take it easy or to to relax. But it's, it could be pretty harmful for your system. Yeah. And for your and for your children's system too. The other the other little tip that's worth thinking about is that generally in sitting, um, it's it's useful for your hip joints, which are uh, pretty close to the bottom of your torso, to be a little higher in space than your knees. Um, certainly, if your knees are higher than your sits bones, you're going to be you're going to have a strong tendency to have to go back, and you're going to fight against that. But if you want to be easily upright and balanced, there there is an inherent advantage in having your knees somewhat lower than your hips. For some people, that might mean getting a stool that's a little higher than a chair. For people um, very short legs and oh and another thing is it can be very useful to have your feet flat on the floor because that's that's also a source of support and for some people especially children uh sitting in a regular chair their feet are gonna kind of dangle down right and that is a little problematical. It, uh, one solution, of course, is to have small, smaller chairs for smaller kids or have some, something that can support their feet, a little stool or something. Um, those are just a, a couple of other, I can almost say biomechanical things to take into account, but um, they are things that most Alexander Technique teachers would address, I think, pretty early on in, in a series of lessons. Absolutely. I, mean, I think they're very important things. And um, one of my Master Alexander Technique teachers once said to me that when you look at the skeletal system, it's kind of like the body recognizes that as a mirror. So whenever you actually look at a diagram, it allows you to then really think about it and, and create this awareness to that place. And so even when you're talking about the neck, you're talking about the, the hip joint, you're talking about the knees, when you mention that, then I, I certainly think about those those parts of my body and it, it brings awareness and I think that improves the functioning of, of the system as a whole um, just by merely talking about it and identifying it. Um, <clears throat> Robert, this has been really helpful. Um, I wonder though if parents that are, are listening to this right now are thinking, gosh, I mean myself included, my kids spend so much time sitting all day. They're watching TV, they're in front of screens got to get them out. They've got to do lots of exercise to kind of overcorrect or compensate for all the time that they're sitting. Uh, what would you say to parents like that? Well, you certainly want to get exercise and, uh, but you, but there, you don't want to, if, if, if anyone, a child or adult has been sedentary for the last few months because of the COVID crisis, for example, um, you, you don't want to suddenly start running, uh, full speed, you know, flat out for an hour at a time. You want to you start slow and build up to it. I think that's just really common sense advice. You don't want to go from zero to 100 instantly. Uh, certainly if, if uh, I mean, if you're running, if that's part of your exercise regime, I would strongly suggest doing it on a earthen, or grassy surface, not on concrete. That's kind of a specific piece of advice. But just generally, uh, start easy and, and work up. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Um, Robert, thank you so much. Uh, what I also loved in your article was how you explained the detriments of sitting and why excessive sitting, a lot of people are saying sitting is the new smoking. And mm -hmm. uh, we have to take this very seriously because even though we've become more sedentary as a, as a, a world um, where most people spend the majority of their days sitting down, uh, we have to remember that this is not really how the body was designed to be sitting, I mean, the sit bones are so small. So that right there from an evolutionary uh, standpoint, um, we weren't really meant to spend so much time sitting down.
is sitting down. I think it's important to be very, very mindful. And you did an amazing job um, giving us some helpful tips, what to think about and how to sit more um, efficiently. So Robert, thank you so much for coming on our show today. And um, is there anything uh, else you'd like to add or any advice you'd like to, uh, to share with parents? No, I think we've covered it pretty nicely. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you.